There are some major changes underway that will impact the world of mobile cellular internet for years to come. And in this three-part video series, we're diving in to explain some of what's up. In this third and final video, we're going to explain some significant shifts coming to the Verizon and AT&T cellular networks and explain some of what's going on with T-Mobile accelerating the retirement of 4G networks. This all comes down to 5G standalone mode. We've got the details. Hi, I'm Chris at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, here to wrap up our video series on some major changes coming to the mobile internet world, and this, particularly the cellular internet world here as of fall 2025. And in this video, we're going to dive into the changes that are coming to the terrestrial network. So in the first video, first two videos, we talked about the changes of impacts from Dish Mobile getting out of running their own independent cellular network. In the second video, we talked about the major changes coming with Starlink's next generation, a direct to cellular service, so cellular from space. Now we're gonna talk about the shifts coming to the current networks that you might already have, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. And there's some significant changes underway. And the root of it all is a technology called 5G standalone mode. So I have a little bit of a history lesson to explain what is going on. So back when 5G first launched, you know, many, many years ago now, in like 2018, 2019, 2020, the carriers kind of had to figure out how to make 5G coexist with 4G. And the way they did this is kind of a stopgap technology is they actually layered 5G as a turbo layer on top of 4G networks. So they called 5G non-standalone mode is the technical term, NSA. Um, because the 5G network is not independent. It is relying on 4G. The main control connection is still 4G. Um, for a while, the upload connections were still 4G. Uh, the latency is still determined by the underlying 4G network. So some of the key advantages of 5G is not there, but you do have a really big boost in download performance because you've got a 5G turbo layer on top of that underlying 4G network. Now, a true native 5G network is running in what's called 5G standalone mode or 5G SA mode. And that means that the 4G radio can be completely turned off. The, the modem is operating in strictly 5G mode. It gets lower latency because it has less overhead from that 4G connection. It doesn't have to keep those 4G channels powered up. So it actually has more power efficient, more be better battery life can come from that. And you get Faster speeds, faster speeds, lower latency, better battery life. It's a win-win-win to be in standalone mode. Also, why is it here in 2025 and only T-Mobile has been operating and offering standalone mode to most consumers? And T-Mobile has actually been offering 5G standalone mode as the a capability of their network since all the way back in 2020. And all through the last several years, AT&T and Verizon have been like, well, Standalone mode, they'll tell industry analysts that they're working on it, they're testing it, and it's still six months away, six months away, six months away. Well, it's finally here as of fall 2025. Um, Verizon and AT&T have both um, uh, turned on and enabled consumer devices to connect to 5G standalone mode. In part, actually, it's Apple's fault in that new Apple Watch lines, the Ultra 3 and the Watch 11, only they're the first major consumer devices that don't support 5G NSA mode. They will connect via 5G SA only or fall back to 4G LTE. As well, Apple pushing this out there, Verizon and AT&T didn't want to be left without 5G on their watches. So that, I think, kind of helped push them over the edge to actually finally let consumers connect to 5G SA mode. Why did they wait so long? Is there a downside? And in fact, there is a significant downside to turning on 5G SA mode for older devices. Because when you start putting devices running in SA mode, whether it's your phone, a watch, anything else, that the channels, the spectrum, um, the 4G spectrum then is no longer being used. So instead of combining a 5G channel or two or three um, together, you, the, the, that's how it would work under 5G standalone mode, in NSA, you've got one 5G channel and several 4G channels combined together. So with those 4G channels no longer in the mix, they're no longer needed. 
a channel really can't be doing two things at once. So all the spectrum that the carriers have, they turning on SA usually means turning off 4G channels and taking some of that spectrum away from 4G. That means switching to SA mode means customers with 4G devices will likely start to have a worse experience, worse coverage, slower speeds, less capacity. So Verizon and AT&T with a lot of legacy customers and a lot of um, kind of uh, congested long range spectrum didn't want to do that until, well, they now hopefully think they've got enough people on 5G that those older legacy customers don't matter quite as much. And they'll probably still be moving slowly to transition that spectrum. The other Thanks for watching. If you enjoy mobile internet related content, that is what we focus on here on the YouTube channel. So please consider subscribing and you can hit that notification bell to get alerted when we come out with a new video. Also, feel free to leave a comment below. We do read all of our comments. And if you want a lot more in-depth information on mobile internet, consider clicking over to our website. That's where the bulk of our content is. So we encourage you to do that. Again, thanks for watching. The other Big news that is happening, though, is some leaked internal T-Mobile documents reveal that T-Mobile has not just had SA for a, a, since 2020. They're now ready to go in full bore SA only, turning off their NSA channels and their 4G channels at a much more rapid retirement pace than anyone anticipated. The internal document says that starting as of January 1st, 2026, T-Mobile will no longer activate devices that are not fully 5G SA compatible without getting special waivers. And they're going to start the rapid retirement of their 4G network, um, turning off those 4G channels to put more spectrum to SA. So now the one thing that a lot of people might be wondering is, well, T-Mobile starting to shut down their 4G LTE networks. How long will LTE devices continue to connect? And well, T-Mobile has said they're going to keep a tiny sliver, just five megahertz of spectrum set aside for LTE through 2035. So there's still basically a 10 year runway for LTE devices to connect. They will get online, but five megahertz is not a very big channel. You will not have a lot of speed and capacity and there might start to be coverage issues. So this is a long runway for 4G to retire, but it's faster than a lot of people expected. And well, it might end up getting pushed back and extended over time, but that is the writing on the wall. 2035 is when T-Mobile plans to fully shut down their 4G network in favor of 5G. Both all the carriers are kind of taking the next step towards, you know, fully embracing the potential of 5G. This means that if you have older devices, if you have 4G devices on any carrier, you're going to start to see impacts. You're going to start to see speeds dropping, coverage dropping, capacity dropping. And even if you have early generation 5G hardware, you know, stuff from the X55 era, um, you'll start to potentially see impacts because that era of hardware is not was more designed for NSA connections than SA connections. It doesn't have great 5G carry aggregation support to combine multiple SA bands. So we're going to see kind of a some substantial reasons to consider upgrading your hardware, particularly as usual on T-Mobile. So if you've got older hardware on T-Mobile, starting next year, things are going to start changing pretty significantly and you'll feel a lot better if you consider upgrading to more modern 5G modems that can take advantage of how these networks are evolving. Major changes afoot, we've got changes happening in space, changes happening in the competitive market space, and changes happening in the technologies that are talking to our devices. Uh, 5G is actually getting more exciting than it has been in years with all these uh, changes going on. And we cover all of this in depth over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center and this video series is just a companion to a major updated news article and analysis that explains in even more depth some of the implications of all these changes. And then of course we go even deeper with our members in our member areas and forums and webinars. So if you wanna understand how the, the cellular world is changing and how the connectivity world is changing and how you can best stay on top of all of this, Come over and join us at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. We'd love to have you. And, well, stay connected out there and uh, keep watching the skies as everything continues to change. Take care. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.